Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Amy, more makeup. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Welcome back to an awesome episode of Engineers Unplugged. I'm here with Nick and Gabriel, and we're going to be talking about policy-based management and VVOLs. So, Gabriel, take it away. Hey, so I'm here with my good buddy Nick. We're going to How talk you doing? about uh, Nick from NetApp. He's going to give us the whole overview of uh, VVOLs and policy-based management and how it integrates with NetApp technology. So, why don't you give us a high-level walkthrough, and we'll just dig into it a little bit more. Well, we're here at VMworld EMEA, and since we had this show in the U.S. already, it's become a more bigger and bigger topic about policy-based management as well as VVOLs and how that leads into, or how policy-based management leads us into VVOLs at some point when the next release comes out. So basically what I want to talk about is how, um, how VASA comes into this conversation because it really is the fundamental key of everything. So what is VASA? VASA is the way that uh, storage arrays can advertise their services up into vCenter so that now you have a VM admin that is, doesn't really have to be a storage expert. He can build a profile, what we call a storage capability profile, into his VASA provider and use the VSC and vCenter just to provision a VM with a standard set of, poly of uh, capabilities that are already defined in a policy. That sounds pretty awesome. I know yeah. VVOL has been in tech preview for a number of years. People have been really excited about it. It's nice to see that it's in beta. People can actually get their hands on it. And now the vendors and other partners can actually start to show off some of their functionality and value add that they can lay on top of it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a long road. We've been at it for about four years. Most people don't know this, is that uh, NetApp HDS and, and Dell Ecologic were all the design partners for, for this technology. And we've, we've been at it started four years ago. So VVOLs is not something that's brand new, but a lot of people are just now hearing about it. Right. Um, the cool thing about the way that we do things now with VASA is it's very strategic for, uh, for us because we knew what was coming with VVOLs and we knew that uh, storage capability profiles would be a big deal. They're native to VASA. But the big thing that people need to understand is the way that it integrates with vCenter's native policies. They're called VM storage policies. So when you create a VM storage policy, you can leverage what VASA has already re, uh, put into vCenter for you. So whether you're using an orchestration engine or a uh, manually just creating a virtual machine, at the very top there's a Dropbox that says pick a storage policy. And that can fall back onto things that are specific to NetApp functionality uh, to design that VM the way that you want it to. It's on a per VMDK basis. So for every hard disk in that virtual machine, you can choose a profile or a policy that you want that particular disk to adhere to. So it's not only VM granularity, we're now down to the VMDK or even VVOL granularity whenever that comes around. Right, taking advantage of the different tiers of storage that you're able to provision inside your environment from something like, say, like a flash, right, an all flash system yep. all the way down to a standard NetApp clustered on, on tap uh, deliverable, right? So you know, I can take advantage of really high density, large capacity disks yep. or really fast storage policies and then integrate these storage policy objects into how my machines are provisioned. So walk us through what that looks like from an admin standpoint. Sure, and to the point you were just bringing up, the, the things that you build in a storage capability profile are storage array specific things that this guy might not be uh, familiar with. Right. Snap mirror, asynchronous and synchronous mirror uh, replication, uh, disk types, like you were saying, from SSDs all the way down to uh, SAS, SATA, you know, if you want cheap and deep, you can make a profile for that. If you want extreme performance, you can absolutely make an all-flash kind of configuration. Uh, HA or, H or not. Uh, right. All those sorts of things that are specific to the storage array are now available a la carte to pick from within vCenter. So basically, the, the, a couple of things are going to happen. There's, it's kind of a three-step process. The first step is you're going to create a storage capability profile. That's where you're going to define uh, or bundle together a package of which storage features you want uh, to define as that. I see that happening as kind of a, a boardroom design session with your storage admins, your network guys, and your systems admins, all getting together and trying to define those. Then you're going to come in and uh, create VM storage policies that match those to really cross-connect the two from your storage array side up into vCenter. At that point, this guy simply creates a new virtual machine, picks a, which policy he wants it to be because they sat in the room and they designed them all together. He doesn't have to know which, what all those special features do. He just knows he wants it in gold, silver, bronze, and off it goes. Awesome, awesome the, the intelligent placement is really the, the, the sweet spot. So when you pick a, when you provision via a policy like that, um, it's only going to put it in compatible storage. So from that point forward, as long as there's no changes on the back end, that VM is always going to be in the right place and you're not going to have a lot of moving around 
uh, crazy stuff like that. We're abstracting away a lot of the complexity that we used to take for granted when we had to do this all manually. Now it ends up becoming a point and click integrated solution so that now your virtual machine admin can actually go uh, leverage his uh, his limited knowledge of storage and actually get the best performance out of it, right, or the best benefit. So right. I think, you know, ultimately we're looking towards simpler solutions, uh, solutions that everybody across multiple silos can cross-integrate, cross-pollinate, and actually implement, and something like this definitely helps them, so. Yeah. There was this weird place where um, we went to, when we got to virtualization, we had, um, uh, we got all the power back. We used to just be servants to the app owners, right? It would just be, I need more storage, I need more horsepower, uh, et cetera, et cetera. When we got virtualization, we took all the power back. Right, exactly. But with great power comes great responsibility, right? We had all the tunables, we had to do everything. So it was the rise of the generalist. Right. You had to know about storage in order to use vMotion. Uh, you had to know about mirroring to know where your restore was going to come from and all kinds of stuff like that. So we're getting back to what I think is uh, re-simplifying the way things go. You know, you have a group of people that decide, a strategy team that decides what these profiles are going to be, right. and then you have admins that are just delivering services, delivering machines. Exactly. So that's great. I really appreciate you coming in board. Thanks a lot. Okay, well, I think we know what time it is. It's time for a simplified unicorn. <laughs> oh boy, this again, right? Maybe, I'll, for, maybe I'll remember the horn and the tail this time. Uh, all right, go, go. Something right. about unicorn. Unicorn as a service. Unicorn as a service? Uh, you're See, drawing I, one I too, just right? Put my head up here like this. <laughs> I got my crown. <laughs> wow, that looks That's like this really weird abstract. Terrifying unicorn. Picasso. <laughs> You know, I have to say, things do get better. That's a much better <laughs> unicorn that's, than you know. last time. And, and that's really evolving as well. So, good work. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Great Thanks, information. Sir. Thanks so much, Gabriel. Thank you, Nick. Anytime. And we'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged.